Lord, your presence is our prize. Your presence is our provision. And we're just so thankful that we can gather as a community this morning and just rest in your presence. If we feel heavy, if we feel burdened, if we feel worn out, we just kind of fall into your presence, into your arms. And it's such a gift that we have access to that. We're just so grateful for your presence. It's all that matters. I want my life to be marked by it. There's nothing more important. There's nothing more important. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for dwelling among us. We want to be your dwelling place. We want to rest and dwell with you. We want to center ourselves in you and always be aware of your presence. Always be aware of what you're doing and what you would have us do. God, we just want our spirit to align with yours. We want them to be one. I just pray that it would be you speaking today, God, and and that we would all be changed by your presence and by what you want to do here today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Woo! Wow, wow. That was so great. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> well, if I don't know you, my name's Ashley, and I'm going to be speaking this morning. Thank you, Bobby. Um, we've been in a series, as you guys know, um, called The Way. We've been talking about discipleship and what it means to really follow Jesus. I have so many tears. Hold on. Okay. He's just so good. Look at this thing. Okay. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. <laughs> okay. Um, the way. So um, discipleship, we've said it's being with Jesus, becoming like Jesus, and doing what he did. We can't become like him. We can't do what he did if we're not with him. So we've been really focused on that first portion, being with him. What does it look like? Um, how can we be more intentional with that? So we've talked about um, friendship with God and the grace aspect of that. We've talked about silence and solitude. We've talked about hearing his voice. We've talked about fasting. And today, I'm talking about the way of rest. Did y'all see that? OK. <clears throat> um, and I'm going to be primarily speaking on Sabbath. So that's the, the goal of today, is to talk about that spiritual practice. Um, I'm excited to share about this. I just need to be honest and say that the Lord's been doing a really deep work in me the past two years. I've never really, I've never been good at rest. It's always been a struggle. So I'm not speaking on Sabbath and rest because it's always come naturally to me. I'm speaking on it because I have done it a really poor job my entire life and he's created a burning in me um, to figure it out. So that's, that's my place. It's this really humble place of like, I've never figured this out and I know it's important and he has created a burning in my heart to find true rest. And um, so that's kind of the journey that I've been on and that's why I'm talking about Sabbath today. Um, so it's not perfected, but I am burning for it. <clears throat> so I just wanna start by defining Sabbath. Some of you guys may already be practicing it. Some of you may not know what it is. So we're just gonna define it together and then go from there. Sabbath is a 24 hour period of rest that happens every seventh day. So it's regular, it's rhythmic, um, and it's an intentional spiritual practice um, that you implement into your life. It was created by God before sin at the creation of the world. Um, the reason why that's significant is because in his perfect world, the world was perfect, there was no fall yet, a Sabbath day existed. Um, and it was woven into the fabric of the world. When he created the world, a Sabbath day was a part of that creation. Um, it was one of the Ten Commandments, as we know, which I feel like is probably the most common knowledge we have of it, is that it was a commandment. It kind of feels like an Old Testament thing a little bit. And we'll talk about it a little more, but it's actually mentioned more in the four Gospels than it is in the first five books of the Bible. So it's not um, necessarily just an Old Testament thing. Um, so 
There are two Hebrew words for rest that, that are found in the Old Testament. The first one is Shabbat, which means to cease or to stop. Um, and that is where we get our English translated word Sabbath, is that word Shabbat. The other one is Nuach, and that one means um, to dwell, to settle. Um, so it indicates more so being restfully present. So you have this word Shabbat that means to stop, to cease, and then you have this word Nuach that means to settle and to dwell. And they kind of go hand in hand. Um, so one is kind of resting from something, and the other one is resting in something, and they go hand in hand. So um, the first time we see the word Shabbat, Genesis 2, 2 through 3, like I said, it's in the creation story. On the seventh day, God completed his work that he'd done, and he rested. Shabbat is the word that's used there on the seventh day from his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He set it apart because on it, God rested from his work that he'd done in creation. The same chapter, just a few verses later, it says the Lord took the man and put him in the garden. The word that's used for put is that word nuach. He settled him in the garden with himself. So the Lord ceased his work and then he settled man in the garden with him, in his presence. And I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this before, but Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day, meaning their first full day of existence was what? Sabbath. And they had this charge from the Lord of um, ruling and reigning and subduing the earth. They had a job to do, but first, they rested in the garden, in the presence of the Father. So Sabbath is not just about not working. It's m so much more than that. It's about resting in our relationship with the Father. The reason why I think that's so significant is because <laughs> Adam and Eve were created and the Father had finished the work. They had a job to do, just like you and I do today. We have things that he's called us to do. We're partnering in things with him. We have a role to do, but we work from rest, not for rest. That's the way it was created to be. And I think a lot of times we work for rest. We feel like we are spinning our wheels and we have to get to a certain place to be able to take a breath. Look at this creation story. This is how he designed it. We work from his finished work. We work from rest, not for rest. We work from his delight, not for his delight. Um, cease and celebrate. I like that phrase. Yeah. Sabbath is ceasing and also celebrating. It's both. It's submitting to his rule and reign. A lot of times we just need to remember that we're not God. <laughs> we have limitations. We are human and we just submit to his sovereignty and then we enjoy the good gifts that he's given us. Yeah. Um, so I have heard someone say before these four words that kind of define Sabbath, because a lot of times people are like, what can I do on a Sabbath? What can't I do? It's not about rules and regulations, but I feel like these four words kind of help give a, a lens or a framework of what a Sabbath day could look like. So Sabbath is stopping, resting, delighting, and worshiping. Stop, rest, delight, worship. For stopping, it's not just stopping work. Ideally, we would stop our worrying and we would stop our wanting. Stop working, <laughs> stop worrying, stop wanting for just 24 hours, <laughs> if you can do it. Um, that's the goal. Resting, that's mind, body, and soul. Um, AKA take a nap if you need a nap. <laughs> um, sleep in, go to bed early. It's, it's definitely resting your body, but it's also mind and soul. What fills you? what replenishes you, and be intentional with um, doing those things. Delighting is just enjoying good gifts, listening to your favorite music, seeing your favorite people, eating your favorite foods. You're just enjoying his gifts. Um, and then also worshiping. Like I said earlier, it's not just a day off. It's, um, it's, about, it's about his presence. I mean, we say that all the time, but that's just what it is. It's about his presence. We don't want anything apart from him. And so that goes for Sabbath too. Even in the midst of doing things that you're delighting in, you're still communing with him in it. Um, so that is what Sabbath is. That's how I would define it. Some people, I've heard it said before that we don't need to 
observe Sabbath today because through Jesus we have access to the spirit of Sabbath rest all the time. And I would say that it's both and. Um, we do have access to rest all the time and we see that in Jesus' teachings. He talks about abiding, he talks about an easy yoke, he talks about restfulness. Um, in Hebrews 4 it says we have a promise to enter into his rest. It is promised to us and if it's about his presence, we have the Holy Spirit, we have access to his presence all the time. That means we have access to rest all the time. It's available to us and really, you know, silence and solitude throughout our day, if we take a few minutes and we just, it's almost like we forget and we have to remind ourselves that we have access to things. It's not like, please give me rest. It's like, you promised this to me. I'm gonna center myself in you and take hold of this promise that you've already promised me. It's already promised to me. Um, so in that way, the access that we have and that practice of just centering ourselves in him is kind of like many Sabbaths throughout the week, I guess. Like we do have access to it all the time. That is true. Um, but there is still something really special about an extended period of time where we cease and celebrate. And even in the midst of Jesus's teachings on abiding in an easy yoke, Jesus practiced Sabbath. It was both for him. Um, and it's definitely countercultural. Sabbath is. I mean, just think about our culture for a second. We've all we live in it. We, you know, what I'm talking about. It's very restless. <laughs> it is relentless, um, performance-driven, anxiety, depression, workaholism, greed, discontentment, um, and so to take an entire 24-hour period where we stop working towards something is weird. <laughs> it's very weird. Um, and, you know, but that's the kingdom reality. A lot of the things that we do are upside down. Um, but the kingdom reality, the reality that you and I live in is that we can rest in his finished work in the midst of struggle, in the midst of pain, in the midst of a restless culture, we, c we can rest. And that is such a statement to the world around us. It's a very powerful statement that in the midst of restlessness, I have access to rest. And I can take th these 24 hours to focus on and rest in my relationship with the Lord. Um, so the question of, is it a, a binding command? Is it something that we have to do today? I would just say, I would point back to everything we've already talked about. It's woven into the fabric of the world. It existed before sin. Um, Jesus practiced it, and it's more of a gift than a command. I think he created it as a gift to us. So it's not so much a have to, it's a, this is such a beautiful gift that he's given me that, that I can rest in the midst of chaos. So um, yeah, it's just, it's a gift. Um, a lot of gospel stories are Sabbath stories. And there was controversy around Jesus and Sabbath because the Pharisees and the religious leaders had made it, they just kind of sucked the life and joy out of it, to be honest. They made a ton of rules and regulations, and the people in that day were so weary from trying to observe it the right way. Um, and so Jesus really sought to, you know, he taught on Sabbath, he healed people on Sabbath, and if we remember that it's about his presence, then you're just going and doing what his presence is leading you to do. And Jesus knew that. He was rooted in his identity, and he was really seeking to redefine and redeem Sabbath, that it wasn't what they thought it was, that they had missed, they had kind of missed it. We have an opposite culture. We don't have any rules and regulations on it. Most of us aren't, you know, doing it. And so I think if he were here, he would probably still be seeking to redefine it and redeem it, but just in a different way. Um, so... The, the reality is any time that we're not intentionally allotting gets de just devoured by busyness. And so it is a very um, intentional practice. We need a rhythm of rest. And the ability to rest in the midst of chaos will carry us the ability to rest in the midst of chaos will carry us through seasons in our life that would have crushed us without it. I really believe that. I really believe that it's that important. And the temptation is to believe that it's a waste of time 
because you're not actively, you know, making progress in, in areas and goals. Um, but we, we just need it. We just need it. So my personal experience with this, I know I mentioned this before, I have never found a good rhythm for my life. I've kind of always been someone that has gone too hard and too fast, slept too little, took on too much. Um, kind of like just feeling like you're on a performance treadmill. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. <laughs> like you're working so hard and you're sweating, but you're literally not getting anywhere. <laughs> And you're just like fighting back chaos on all sides and you're not experiencing any real rest inside. Um, I feel like I felt like that for most of my life. And that's why this is so important to me right now is because I know what it's like to not have rest. Um, I have had excruciating stomach ulcers from stress. I have had anxiety attacks. I've had um, just mental and emotional breakdowns in my life. And you would think, right, that if you have this breaking point that you would say, mm, maybe I should reevaluate some things. But it's like the release from the emotional breakdown made me feel like I could pick everything back up. Like, okay, I feel better now, let's go. Um, silly, silly. So, <clears throat> my husband Alex and I, we had a baby two and a half years ago. It was probably the first time in my life where I was forced to recognize my limitations as a, as a human being, right? When you have a baby and you're postpartum and you're Realizing I, we can't travel as much as we used to travel. We can't say yes to everything we used to say yes to. Um, we can't even serve as much as we were used to serving. And it was driving me nuts. I'm like, because you realize I can't do everything. I can't be everything. And at first that just felt like tragic. <laughs> like not towards Aiden, I loved being a mom, but I was just realizing like I can't do everything. And it was kind of driving me nuts, but it was such a gift. And I think that's why these past two years have been so fruitful for me because for the first time I'm realizing I need to live within the limits of my humanness. And that is the way that, that things were designed. I'm not God. I can't do everything. I can't be everything to everybody. And I never should have tried. I never should have tried. Um, I rest in my relationship with the one who has finished the work. I rest, I can rest. So this has been about a two year journey for me. I'm searching for sustainable rhythm. I don't think that I've quite found it yet, but I am really going after it. And the idea of settled living, I wanna feel settled in my spirit. I don't wanna feel like I'm always in a rush. I just wanna feel like I'm partnering with him and I'm doing what he's calling me to do. And I'm just settled in my identity and in his presence and um, and just really, yeah, take hold of everything that he's promised me. So that's where I'm at. I think probably one of my biggest struggles was believing that worry is responsible. We think that if we worry <laughs> about things, that we're like covering our bases and pre maybe preventing bad things from happening if we try to we're just trying to take care of everything on our own. Trust is the most responsible thing that we can do. It's trusting. It's not easy to do. I've had so many of these come to Jesus moments, usually during the emotional breakdowns, where I'm like, this question is really important. I know it's gonna sound really simple, but wherever you're at in your life, wherever your biggest struggles are, this is, this is the question. Do I really trust him? Do I really trust him? Yeah. That's a hard question. But we have to answer it. Yeah. Do I really know him? Yeah. If you know his character and you see his faithfulness in the past, you see his faithfulness throughout scripture, you know who he is, you spend time with him. You spend time in his presence, just a moment in his presence, right? Then trust will come easier. It really is all about his presence. Um, Worry is misplaced trust. We know this. And, and I do want to say that rest will not solve problems. Because I think that's important to note too. Um, I know I mentioned a few weeks ago a book that I have been reading through called Sacred Rhythms by Ruth Haley Barton. She says this in her chapter on Sabbath. She said, we want something to solve our problems. We don't understand that rest can exist even in the midst of problems. 
The solution of being comforted by his presence doesn't necessarily eliminate the problem, but it is still the solution. Right. Rest can exist in the midst of problems. We are invited to real rest right now in the midst of struggle and pain. We don't have to wait for eternity to taste it. How amazing is that? Really, if you think about it, it's amazing. It's an amazing gift. And we just kind of go through our life, we're not really taking hold of it. Um, so how do we do it? I do want to get practical. The first, well, I would say plan it, prepare for it, and practice it. So plan it, um, I'm going to get real practical. <clears throat> A lot of people will suggest starting at night with your Sabbath. This is what Alex and I do. Um, you don't have to, again, every, every suggestion I share or anything, any example I use of what Alex and I have been doing, it's, there are no rules and regulations. Sabbath is going to look different for every family in this room. Um, I'm just kind of sharing some ideas. I like the idea of starting at night with dinner because I feel like dinners, think about like birthday dinners or holiday dinners, it's like a high point kind of. It's just like a fun place to start. And then you just kind of get to crash and go to sleep afterwards <laughs> and then you can wake up and continue. But it's like, you know, you kind of have that space to crash from the week. Um, so we typically do Friday night through Saturday evening. Um, for some people, the Saturday evening through Sunday evening would work well too because you would get to worship here on Sunday mornings with your community on your Sabbath. It's really just up to you and what works for your family. Um, something that I've heard said to kind of think about your framework going into Sabbath and approaching it is to think about holidays and just the culture of holidays. So you are usually taking some time off. You're ceasing your work a little bit around a holiday. Um, you have traditions with your family that you look forward to doing, certain activities that you do, certain foods that you eat, um, just traditions. There's traditions around it. It's highly communal. It's about being with people. It's highly restful. Um, but with Sabbath, it happens every week. <laughs> How awesome is that? It's amazing. Um, so yeah, think holidays. And it's like something that you create traditions with your family, like you get to decide what it looks like for you. I know some people, they'll have candles that signify different things and they light the candles and it's, that's like the start of their Sabbath. Maybe one for cease, one for celebrate, or you can have one candle for every person in your family. Um, the possibilities are endless, but you just get to create fun traditions with your family. Um, and then the questions I would ask as you try to decide what am I gonna do on my Sabbath is what fills you, um, what delights you, and what replenishes you? What are those things? And again, that's highly unique and individual, right? Because all of us probably have different answers. Um, for some people, cooking is something that makes them feel happy and fulfilled. And it's therapeutic and they enjoy making a meal. For some people, they do not want to do that on their Sabbath. <laughs> Okay, everybody's different. And so, um, you know, for us, probably I'll try to do like double recipes on Friday so I don't have to cook on Saturday. Um, so that's the, I guess let's move on. That's the other part of it is prepare for it. In Exodus, when the Israelites were um, delivered from slavery in Egypt and they were in the wilderness, you know, the Lord um, was providing them manna. He told them on the sixth day, gather a double portion so that you don't have to gather manna on the seventh day, which was their Sabbath. You prepare to rest. It's not really just gonna happen. Like I'll say for me, I probably do more chores on Friday than any other day because when Alex gets home, I wanna be done. That's my goal. So I'm trying to get, and you know, I mean, it's hard to wake up on a Saturday morning to like a mess. Well, for some people it's not. For me, it drives me nuts. So I prepare to rest. I get stuff done so that we can enjoy the, that 24 hour period. So that's gonna look different for everybody too, but you prepare for it, whatever that looks like for you and your family. Um, so just some ideas of what you can do. Light candles, take communion, pray blessings over one another, read a psalm, worship together. And again, this is not supposed to be like a boring day. Like think holidays again, right? It's really fun, it's really happy, your family looks forward to it every week. Um, even worshiping together, like something I've done with Aiden before is turn some worship music on the TV and I'll bring out his basket of instruments and he'll be like playing guitar, playing xylophone and we're worshiping together, but it's, you know, it's what works for our family in this season right now because it's gonna look different um, throughout all the seasons of your life. So let's see, let's see. And then practice it. So let me just say, 
for most of us, we are really not used to resting. It doesn't come naturally to us. It is actually really hard to rest. You would think, I mean, in theory, it sounds really fun. I just get a 24-hour period where I get to rest, but it's actually pretty hard to do. So just start practicing it and start where you're at. Um, even if it's just a few hours, say you, you can block off from 7 to 12 on a Saturday morning. Maybe you turn your phone off and you have five hours of rest. If that's where you're at right now, then just start there because rest is important and um, it doesn't have to be perfected when you start. You can be start where you're at and work towards something, work towards a goal. Um, and again, it's not le legalistic. Sabbath is just a beautiful, beautiful gift that he's given us. Um, the lens, again, is stopping, resting, delighting, and worshiping. So when, when you're trying to to decide what you're gonna do that day, just kinda ask yourself if it's one of those things. And if it's not, you have six other days for it. That's, you just, you do it another day. Um, and, and that sounds simple too, which it is difficult, but we have to get to a place where the decisions that we make, the way we spend our time, the actions that we take, line up with what we say is important to us. I feel like there's been so many areas in my life where I have been living in dissonance with what I say is important to me and what I'm choosing to do with my time. And that is a hard place to be. Um, like identity crisis. <clears throat> so we kind of have need to have this reckoning where if, if you're saying something's important to you, if you're saying his presence is more important than anything else, then we need to get to a place where our time and the decisions that we're making reflect that. That's just the truth. Um, so, Adam, if you'll come back up, I want to do something to end t this morning together. I would really like for us to rest in his presence together and kind of tap into that spirit of Sabbath rest that we were talking about. Um, so the goal of this time, don't feel awkward. Resist the temptation to feel awkward. Um, we're gonna make rest cool again. <laughs> okay, so this is what's gonna happen. This is the great exchange that happens in his presence. We lay our burdens down and we take hold of the peace that he paid for. That's the great exchange. So. We're just gonna take a few minutes. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're going through in your life right now. I don't know your deepest struggles. He does, he knows, and he just wants to be with you. So we're gonna stop, we're gonna cease, cease your worrying for these next five minutes. We don't have any other agenda other than just focusing on his presence and taking hold of the promise of rest. We're gonna take hold of it. And I love that we get to do this as a community. Even this series that we've been in, talking about discipleship and what it means to follow Jesus, we're all going after this thing together. And none of us have it perfected. And so we get to go after this stuff as a family. Like, we're a family in this room. We're going after it together. It's so fun. And figure it out together, even as we're all figuring out what a Sabbath would look like for our families, like helping each other figure that out. Um, so I just want to, I'm going to read Matthew 11, 28 through 29, and then we're just going to take some time, and I want you to exchange your burdens for his peace and just, and just rest in his presence. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul.